This video is brought to you by the Logitech Lightspeed Wireless range of keyboards, mice and headsets, the benchmark in wireless gaming performance. This is it, Days Gone, a hugely popular Sony first-party PlayStation 4 exclusive. It's one of just two legacy titles from the platform holder to have received an explicit upgrade for PlayStation 5, unlocking 60 frames per second gaming. The other, of course, is Ghost of Tsushima, which I've already looked at and found to be rather excellent, despite a technically limited, albeit transformative enhancement. From the looks of things, Days Gone follows the same formula. What was a 30 frames per second experience on PS4 and PS4 Pro has the shackles of the 30 FPS cap removed, allowing the 10.28 teraflops of GPU compute, along with the radical improvement of the Zen 2 architecture, to really let this game shine in a way that we've never seen before. And just like Ghost of Tsushima, Days Gone is part of the PlayStation Collection, a bonus for PS5 users who subscribe to PlayStation Plus. So these 60fps enhancements for these two games, excellent stuff, but there's potential for more here, something that we'll explore in further content. You see, there are two games within the collection that are still locked to 30fps on PlayStation 5, but they can actually be run at 60 frames per second. First example, God of War here. This is the original unpatched disc version of the game. Now, additional patches, starting on day one, were added that implemented performance and quality modes for PlayStation 4 Pro users running at 1080p and checkerboard 4K respectively. But the disc version retains the original unlocked frame rate, which PlayStation 5 is able to tap into for a spectacular result. You really need to see this on the digital edition of the game, in my opinion. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about The Last Guardian, but it's another game where a capped 30 frames per second experience on PlayStation 5 via patches and digital downloads runs almost flawlessly at 60 FPS, but again, only if you have the original disc version of the game. But Days Gone is the focus of this video, and it has been patched to unlock performance when running on PlayStation 5 hardware, but it's important to set some expectations here. I did see various bits of speculation about native 4K rendering and maybe even pushed out draw distances, but from what I can see this does seem to be using the same technique as Ghost of Tsushima and Cyberpunk 2077, which is to say that the PS4 Pro version of the game is run on PS5 hardware, but yeah, that 30fps limit is removed, radically improving the experience. Side by side, You'll note that PlayStation 5 renders the game identically to PS4 Pro in terms of the visual feature set and resolution. This is no bad thing really as the game is very attractive as is and in common with many of the first party titles, the checkerboarding solution is superb to the point where when I was briefed on the hardware by Mark Cerny, he invited me to literally spot the difference with the game running on two 65 inch Sony 4K TVs side by side native on one side, checkerboard on the other. I was able to figure out which was which, but it took close-up eyeballing to tell any kind of difference at all. So checkerboarding, when done well, it's really quite exceptional. Now if you take a look at screenshots, freeze frames of scene cuts, you do see telltale artifacts. You can see it here on Deacon's hair. Very hard to see in motion, but we are seeing them on PlayStation 5, which rules out native rendering. But the point is, I think, we don't need native rendering. The extra horsepower can be deployed exclusively on vastly improved performance instead. I should say that there are ancillary benefits though, specifically because of the SSD and the much faster CPU, which means that loading times are significantly reduced, but also the texture streaming pop-in is effectively gone. I only ever really noticed this in cutscenes on the PS4 Pro, and even then the effect is fleeting but its removal is a factor of the underlying PS5 architecture, an automatic bonus that further refines the experience. So let's go into the performance boost in more detail, because if you bought the game at launch, played it a bit and put it down, well, I've got a lot of good news for you. If you remember our initial DF coverage back in the day, the game launched with what we suspected to be some background CPU-related streaming issues. There are a couple of areas at the beginning of the game here, specifically the initial bike chase, 
that highlight the problem and how the initial patches improved matters. Now we saw some impressive optimizations here, if not quite the cure-all we were looking for. The point is that while our focus necessarily moved on to new games, developer Ben Studio didn't sit still. The optimizations just continued to roll in, so yes, PlayStation 5 will run this game at 60 frames per second. PS4 Pro and the base PS4 are now much closer to their 30 FPS targets. Ben Studio even released a patch that drops the game's 60 GB storage footprint down to 38 GB, which does suggest a pretty fundamental revamp of the way that assets are compressed in the game. So let's take a look at current performance with the fully patched game. First of all, on PlayStation 4 Pro versus PlayStation 5, beginning with matched content in the form of real-time engine cutscenes. Basic parallel lines essentially on the frame rate graph here, PS4 Pro at its target 30 FPS, PlayStation 5 at 60. You may note single frame drops on the PlayStation 5 side. This is down to a repeat frame on select scene cuts. Days Gone does have a bit of a stutter issue in its cutscenes, in that on every scene cut it blurs frames from one camera angle to the next. Noticeable on PS4 Pro, but not really detected by our frame rate tools, while in some cases it manifests as an extra dropped frame at 60 on PS5. The same situation persists into the initial bike ride scene that caused some problems at the dawn of the game's release, but interestingly there are some very sporadic single dropped frames on PlayStation 5, basically unnoticeable in gameplay, and I did wonder why I was seeing them at all, necessitating some retests, but they are indeed there. More of a statistical anomaly as opposed to anything that's actually going to get in the way of your gaming. The final scene here, exiting the first camp, shows some minor instability on PS4 Pro and again just the occasional dropped frame on PlayStation 5. I've included this scene because in earlier revisions of the game, again, this area did cause some issues on legacy PlayStation hardware. So you're seeing the improvement here, uh, which is significant, and you're also seeing that PlayStation 5 powers through it. Now let's rerun those tests up against the base PlayStation 4. This runs at standard 1080p, capped at 30fps, so in comparison to PlayStation 5, if you're upgrading your console you're getting an effective minimum doubling of frame rate and quadrupling of resolution via checkerboarding plus some minor improvements to shadow rendering. The initial cutscene shows the 30fps versus 60fps differential, and while there are still some dips to performance on the base machine, it's obviously much improved over the original release. The final camp scene shows that although much improved from launch, there are still some lingering issues on base machines. My bet is that if the streaming system is under more stress via faster traversal from an upgraded bike for example, you may see further instability further on into the game. Regardless though, PS5 cleans it all up, so the boost going from PS4 to PS5 is even greater than moving up from the Pro. Ok, so I do think that Days Gone is CPU limited in the areas where we do see drops, but I do think this game is remarkably scalable in terms of its graphics because of one of the title's signature elements, the Horde. The infected masses can account for up to 500 entities in any given scene, and there are 40 Hordes in total across the map, and I think from the graphics side of the equation, performance is remarkably solid even on the base PlayStation 4. So this is the first horde that you're likely to encounter. Frame rate's actually pretty good. Remember, this is the base machine we're looking at here. Pursued by so many entities, you'd expect slowdown, but it holds up very well overall. However, that's the first horde you encounter, and certainly not the largest. So is there any way that we can actually stress test this area of the game and do so in a repeatable fashion across all three of our PlayStation consoles? Well. The challenge modes allow for just that. We didn't have access to the challenge mode when the game first launched. And here, this is an interesting one. Here we're dealing with a horde that's 300 strong, with all participants on display. And now we're going to burn a large proportion of them with a series of napalm molotovs. All hell kicks loose, and as I use explosive barrels to take out sections of the horde, in a series of run and gun manoeuvres, you'll notice some big, big slowdown here on the base machine. At the beginning of the section, in fact, when the horde is at its most numerous, 
the game can freeze for around 280 milliseconds, the CPU totally overwhelmed, I suspect, with the physics calculations. Now, I do think it is the CPU that is the issue here, because you can actually turn away from the horde and run for your life, and as the explosion kicks in, you still get the stutter, regardless of what's happening on screen. As the sequence continues, we can't shake the slowdown that accompanies virtually every major explosion, but it does become less impactful, I suspect because there's less infected to process. My contention then, Days Gone has a surfeit of GPU power on PlayStation 5. It can hold 60 frames per second consistently because the graphics side of the equation is very well handled to begin with. The question is to what extent the PS5 can minimize the CPU hit owing to its vastly more capable Zen 2 architecture. Before we get around to that, let's move on to PlayStation 4 Pro, which is still using AMD Jaguar CPU cores, but has just over 30% of extra frequency. So we should expect a reasonable improvement to the stutter uh, that we saw on the base machine. And indeed, we do get that improvement. That 280 millisecond stutter I saw on the base machine reduces to 200 millisecond on the Pro. Still significant, still noticeable, but clearly an improvement. And as the horde thins out, the stutter from further explosive encounters becomes much less of an issue. Interesting stuff, but how does the PlayStation 5 cope with its far superior CPU? It's good, but it's not quite perfect. Approaching the horde with 300 entities in view, we're still at 60 frames per second as you would expect, but as we line up our shots with the Napalm Molotovs, and let them fly, we do start to get some frame drops, but nothing serious. And this one, this is a really challenging test. The horde funnel through a tight area here and the explosive barrels are ignited. And while we are still losing frames, it's happening in single frame increments. We aren't getting the 280 or 200 millisecond stutter we saw on the PlayStation 4 generation of consoles. Across several runs, the biggest frame time spike I could get was 83 milliseconds, which is a huge, huge improvement over Jaguar, but most of the time I saw just a few dropped single frames. With that said, I do think that we can hit some GPU limits as opposed to CPU, for example when the screen is overrun with zombies here finishing me off. Ultimately, we've got a phenomenal stress test here, and while the PlayStation 5 doesn't quite deliver a pristine 60 FPS, the improvement is still revelatory compared to the last gen machines. And remember, this is worst case scenario conditions really. It's a pleasingly solid experience, and more than that, it's fundamentally a better game to play, owing to the big reduction in input lag, making for a much more responsive experience. You see, similar to titles like The Last of Us Part 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2, Days Gone has an animation heavy focus that can make control feel rather heavy. This is not completely resolved on PlayStation 5, far from it, but there's a big improvement here for sure, especially noticeable in shooting, especially in the run and gun encounters with the Horde. So all told, this is a nice way to show PlayStation 5 flexing its muscles. And even if it's not the complete cure-all you might have hoped for, I think you have to remember that this is basically running under backwards compatibility. So while the increase to performance is big, it would not be tapping into anything like the full power of the console. So case in point, the GPU is running in GCN compatibility mode, meaning that the full architectural improvements of RDNA 2 won't be in effect here. Additionally, legacy PS4 hardware may well have the same amount of CPU cores as the Zen 2 cluster in PS5, but remember that the new console has simultaneous multi-threading support, SMT or hyper-threading if you like, which will not be tapped into in back compat mode. In short, while the results are impressive here, Days Gone is not going to have access to the same kind of system resources as a native PlayStation 5 app. Still though, impressive nonetheless. I just hope to see more of these uh, double frame rate upgrades happening on legacy PlayStation 4 titles, whether they're coming from Sony or third party publishers. At the very least on paper, it looks like a cost effective way to renew interest in a library title. And yeah, really Sony, The Last Guardian, God of War, we know that these games fly on PlayStation 5 hardware, so it would be really wonderful to see the 30 FPS caps removed there 
in a similar way to what we're seeing here with Days Gone and of course Ghost of Tsushima. But that's all for me for now, which means it's the usual outro where I beseech you to like, subscribe and share the content and ring the notification bell for, yes, instant notifications whenever new Digital Foundry content arrives on the channel. And of course, I'm sure you know this by now, but DF Patreon supporters can get access to our pristine quality video downloads on digitalfoundry.net, along with an invite to our rather wonderful community on the DF Discord. So do bear that in mind. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting Digital Foundry. A breakthrough in design and engineering, the G915 features Lightspeed Pro Grade Wireless, Advanced Light Sync RGB, and new high performance, low profile mechanical switches. Meticulously crafted from premium materials, the G15 is a sophisticated design of unparalleled beauty, strength, and performance. Meet G15 Lightspeed and play the next dimension.